Think of an aspect of your life that dictates the limits of your freedom. Government and law enforcement, insurance and pharmaceutical companies, taxes, building permits, driver's licenses, and more. There are hundreds if not thousands of stipulations, regulations, and boundaries on our freedom. And out of the ones that were just mentioned, how many have you researched to find out whether they apply to you or not? Let's look at the forms of law that we currently acquiesce to. A common misconception among people is that any rule or regulation that governs them falls under one category law. But there are many other forms of law that people abide by without realizing that they simply do not apply to them. Another misconception is that a nation's constitution gives us our rights. A constitution does nothing more than list the rights that we already have. We are born with inalienable rights, endowed to us by our Creator. They are not given to us and they cannot be given away. The most a person can do with a right is choose whether to exercise it or not. Maritime Admiralty Law is what's known as the Law of the Water. It is superseded by civil law and only applies to those who willingly contract themselves into it. The definition of Admiralty Law is a body of private international law governing the relationships between private entities which operate vessels on the oceans. Let's look at how and why a form of law that is fashioned to govern corporations, businesses, and vessels has imposed its rule over natural human beings. This is all done through a form of word magic. A simple perversion of language has made it possible to convince people around the world that these alternative laws apply to them. One of the predominant beliefs in modern culture is that licenses, permits, registrations, and other forms of documentation are required to operate motor vehicles, use public roads, build structures and establishments, engage in free enterprise, and much more. Sadly, these beliefs are based on little to no investigation whatsoever, and are false. This belief structure is perpetuated by maritime admiralty law. This form of law was originally created to govern ships docking in foreign nations for the import or export of products and resources. It deals with banking and merchant affairs, not civil affairs. When a product is taken off of a ship and brought into a foreign land, that nation takes custody of the resource and accounts for it with a certificate. That certificate marks the birth date of that product in the custody of the respective nation. Think of why it is supposedly required to have a certificate of live birth in the first place. The Barron's Dictionary of Banking Terms defines a certificate as a paper establishing an ownership claim. So right there, we notice that everyone with a birth certificate is defined as being owned. People are used as collateral with other nations because the U.S. is bankrupt. The United States declared bankruptcy on March 9th of 1933. At this point, the U.S. began taking out loans from a private, non-government affiliated corporation called the Federal Reserve. With no money to pay back the loans, the United States began using the citizens as collateral. All birth and marriage certificates are literally warehouse receipts. Just look at the similarities of warehouse receipts and birth certificates. Both document the date of issue, a serial number, registration number or receipt number, a description of the product, and an authorized informant to notify the appropriate government agency. With all of this information being readily available, the majority of people are unaware of their involvement with maritime admiralty law. This is possible through the manipulation of language. This admiralty law changed the meaning of the word person from a natural living person to a corporation. Driver's licenses, vehicle registrations, auto insurance forms, building permits, gun permits, work permits, tax filing documents, birth and death certificates, traffic citations, and many other forms of documentation that were once believed to be absolutely necessary only apply to persons or corporations. Upon signing such a legal document, upon signing such a legal document, 
you are indirectly waiving your rights under the Constitution and lowering your status to that of a corporation that is created with the same exact name as you. The only way to reconcile your true name from the name of the corporation is to take notice that the corporation has its name in all capital letters. This is known as Capitus Diminutia Maxima. You may take notice that your driver's license, birth certificate, social security card, insurance cards, and more use all capital letters to legally represent the corporation with your name, not you. The corporation is known as an artificial person, whereas you, the human being, are known as a natural person. This deception goes even deeper when it comes to the courts that we attend. When showing up the court, you will notice that there are seats for witnesses behind a wooden fence or barrier. The defendant must cross through the entrance to the other side of the barrier where the plaintiff and judge sit. This act symbolizes the boarding of a ship. At this time, business can be conducted in maritime admiralty law. The judge, acting as captain or banker, is responsible for settling the balance between the two sides. This is why there is always a monetary value involved in any court case. The captain is simply dealing with banking and merchant disputes. Once the balance is paid, the case is closed. To turn the court case away from admiralty law where your rights are not protected, you must avoid agreeing to represent the artificial person. This is done by stating that you are the natural person. You don't have a first or last name because those imply corporate title. In a court case, you may state that the court takes judicial notice of your honor's oath of office. Every judge must take an oath of office to practice law, yet you must make it clear to the court and the jury that the judge is acting as judge and not banker. Remember that you are a natural human being of the earth. You are not governed by anything but your own consciousness. Laws are created within a society. The society that created the laws we see being enforced today is called the Law Society. Yet the most beautiful part of this entire deception is the fact that we are not part of the Law Society, so their laws do not apply to us. Judges, lawyers, and law enforcement officers, they're all part of a society. Within that society, they've created their own language that's deceptively similar to English. They have these little things called statutes, acts, and regulations that seem like laws but they really only apply to those within their society. So that basically means all the traffic violations, minimum age requirements, and everything except for damage to another person or their property doesn't really apply to the natural person. Laws only apply to those within the law society. The game being played is an illusion. You can simply choose to open your eyes and reclaim the freedom that you were born with bound by nothing but the limits of your imagination. These are just a few examples of assuring that your rights are being protected. By far, the most important line of defense against this deception is to be aware of the perversion of language, and be absolutely aware of how you form your beliefs and concepts. In all forms of the perversion of language, there is a mere reflection of this in the microcosm of the psyche. And the problem I see with humanity today is we don't truly know ourselves anymore. We have the 9 to 5 job, we have the house, the children, the bills, the television, the hobbies, and the errands that we run every single day, and we eventually begin to believe that this is who we are. You know, but who are we beneath the job title, beneath the status of mother or father, theist or atheist, Republican or Democrat, black or white, man or woman, who are we? Who are we deep down inside? We don't know because every time we hear an answer that we don't want to accept about ourselves, we deny it. We'll pass it off and project it onto somebody else and judge them for it. This is repression. And we see what repression is do to us on an individual level, but what about on a collective level of humanity? What happens when the whole world refuses to see what they truly are on the inside? Corporate. Corporate.
Corporations are people, my friend. We can raise taxes on... Of course they are. Everything corporations earn ultimately goes to people. So, where do you think it goes? What, what? Whose pockets? Whose pockets? People's pockets. Okay, human beings, my friend. So, number one. There's a Roman maximum in law that says, for he that would be deceived, let him. Simply meaning, if you are so ignorant as to be deceived, then that's your business, that's your problem. So you need to do your homework and find out what the words mean, especially in relation to law and government. Because there is a whole a world of occultism that is operating today in which you use certain words and when those words are used in a court they don't mean the same thing at all. Understanding law and the words of law there are two things that this planet has water and earth, water and land. Consequently there are two kinds of law the law of the land and the law of water. You need to understand the difference. The law of the land is the law of the culture that lives on the land. And so consequently the law of the land is different in every country. You can do things in America you can't do in Russia. However, there is a higher law that dominates the entire world. It's called the law of the water. The law of water is referred to as the law of money. It doesn't matter what color you are, where you're from, or where you live. Money is money. And any time you're doing banking or using money, you are now under the law of water, maritime admiralty. If you go back in history where all of this began, back in the land of Cana, and you probably have heard in the Bible the land of Cana. The Canaanites were Phoenician, Phoenician bloodline. And in the ancient Phoenician language, Cana meant merchant banker. The very word merchant comes from mer, M-E-R, for the sea, for water. As a mermaid, we have merchant, merchant bankers. Let me give an example of the difference between the law of water and the law of the land. The Statue of Liberty must be put in water. It could not be put on American land as such. It had to be put in a harbor because it's not the Statue of Freedom. It's a Statue of Liberty. Liberty is what a sailor gets when he pulls into port on a ship. He gets liberty. He's not free. So America is not the land of the free and the home of the brave. We're not free or brave, period. And make no mistake, they do not pick words by chance. These words are very serious. Now let me give you an example of how this law of the water works. Why is it that you have to go to court? You go to court because you play basketball and tennis on a court. How do you play tennis on a court? You play with a racket. Why? Because that's what it is. It's a racket. When you go into a court, what's the idea of going to court? It's a game, like basketball. The whole idea in a court, uh, one team gets up and they throw the ball over to that team of lawyers. That team gets up and throws the ball back into their court. And the judge is wearing a black robe, so he is the referee. He doesn't care which side wins or loses because he's going to get paid anyway. So he couldn't care less. The judge is a, is a referee between two teams. The judge rules from the bench. The word bench in Latin is a bank. Therefore, the judge rules for the bank. Where do you find banks? You find banks on both sides of a river. They're called river banks. And what does a river bank do? It directs the flow of the current sea. Consequently, your money is current sea because it's the flow, the cash flow. I'll give you an example of how this works. When a ship pulls into a harbor, all ships are referred to as female. Why? There's a very good reason. Maritime Admiralty Banking Law says all ships are female because they're carrying items for money and so consequently they are under maritime admiralty law. Admiralty is where we get the word admiral, admiral of the navy. Let me give you an example of how this works. When a ship pulls into a harbor, it parks at the dock, the captain has to provide for the port authorities a certificate of manifest. 
because yesterday the ship was not here, but this morning the ship pulled in, so it has manifested. So consequently, all the products have manifested. So each one of those items coming off of that ship has come off of water. And consequently, on a ship, all ships have a captain. The word captain comes from a Latin word, capital, money. So the captain represents the money that's on board the ship. And as I said, the captain has to present to the port authorities a certificate of manifest for each and every item. How much does it weigh? What color is it? How many doors does it have? Etc. The ship is sitting in its berth. Wherever a ship sits when it docks is called its berth, birthing a ship. All the items, as I said, coming off that ship represent money. They came in on water. They are maritime admiralty products. Now, when you were born, your mother's water broke. And when your mother's water broke, you came out. And this is why you have to have a birth certificate. Because you are a maritime admiralty product under international law. Your mother delivered you. This is why if you go to Sears and buy a refrigerator, they will ship it to you. They will deliver it. And that's why you were in your delivery room. Your mother was delivering a product. Maritime Admiralty. You came down your mother's birth canal. And once you, uh, and as you're taking one of the, uh, the televisions or the cars off the ship and it falls down and breaks, uh, that's all right. Sometimes they're still born, so consequently you've lost money on that one. Therefore, you have to have a death certificate and it's always signed by the doc. The doc has to sign your birth certificate and your death certificate. All of these words and terms are maritime admiralty banking words and therefore if you understand lawyers and judges and courts and government are all under international maritime admiralty law. All religions, all churches in the world operate under maritime law. This is why all churches are divided into denominations like 20s and 50s and 100s. This is why they're called denominations because all churches are nothing more than the product of maritime admiralty banking. It's an extraordinary story of occult treason high treason and crimes against the state. Make no mistake about it. The concept of human, spiritual, intellectual, and physical freedom never, ever existed on the earth. Think about this. When cowboys in India movies, when the cowboys would ride into town, they were wearing guns. How come they could walk into a bar carrying guns? And if two guys got in an argument, they could go out on the street and draw on each other in front of the sheriff's office and the sheriff would do nothing. The reason why is because before 1868 all Americans were considered sovereigns. In 1868 there was a corporation founded. They referred to it as the United States Corporation and they stipulated that anybody who would be a member of that corporation or work for that corporation would be called not an employee but a citizen. So today if you are asked are you a citizen of the United States what you think you're being asked is, are you lawfully in this country to do business? They didn't ask you if you were in America lawfully. They asked you a specific question. Are you of your own volition, out of your own mouth, testifying that you are a citizen of the United States? Because in that way, citizen of the United States means you are an employee of a foreign corporation operating on international maritime law. So today, the President of the United States is the President of a privately owned company. The company is called United States. And the word President is always a word that is used in corporate law. Banks have presidents. All companies have presidents. So there's a corporation called United States, privately owned, and it has a president. Privately owned, out of England. And you need to understand words and terms. Because I believe that there is a divine presence in the universe that men call God. And one day that divine presence is going to move on the earth and we're going to see freedom come back to this world. And when it does, you're going to need to understand words and terms and how they have been used to trick you. 
these words have been used to enslave you. I stand as myself and speak for myself in myself. And I am not the trustee over the old calf's name that you're operating on. Well, you're here in court today because you were charged with some charges. I'm here in court today because I am making a special visitation. This is not an appearance, only spirits appear. Living men, living persons make special visitation. That's why I'm here, to make sure that you guys don't tender my truthful, proper name. Do you still have a 28 Flying Eagle in Manhattan? That is a storage unit that I sleep in from time to time. All right. I live in myself in this body. I am the living man. You were here, you were seen by Mr. Putz on 9-3 of 13, and you asked, at that time he appointed you a public defender. Did you apply for the public defender? What use have I for a voice of ruin? They can only not. speak fictitious legalese to you. I speak natural living man's English to you. It's called common okay. English. That's the only thing that I work in. That's fine. There will be no legalese used here. <coughs> well, you were charged on the 31st of August of 2013 with obstructing a police officer in violation of 457302. You were also charged on the same date with resisting arrest in violation of 457301. The Those men were charged by me right back by staging an overthrow of the Constitution of 1789, an overthrow of the Bill of Rights, an overthrow of my rights to forage for food as a natural living person who was in hunger. I was searching for something to put in my stomach as I am recognized to be allowed to do, but universal law has nothing to do with your corporate fiction. They violated everything, and furthermore, for your knowledge, they violated Judge Holly Brown's Title 26 United States Code ruling, which I went before her and prevailed on 21st March 2011. EP09-58A is the case number wherein she evidenced that I am not a taxpayer because I am not a federal citizen. Federal law trumps state law at every turn. I have nine judge rulings to that end, and that trumps state law. I am not registered crap. I am the living man, and I have the right to forage for food when I'm hungry. All right. But you're here on different charges. That this is, is not Holly stands. Brown's courtroom. Ma'am, you can argue this all day long. You're operating on I'm telling, corporate fiction. I'm telling you, you're here on some charges which were filed in three courts. I do not number understand one, those charges. Number one, you keep interrupting me, and I'm going to charge you with contempt, and you'll go to oh, jail. contempt of court is spelled C-O-double-A, and I know about calling this navigation. Sir, contempt is the storm. I said, be don't quiet until me. I get don't through this. Don't touch me. You ain't a gun. Don't you touch me. I am the living man protected by universal law. You keep Just talking, down. and you're going to be charged with contempt, and you're going to go to jail. You have already contempted this place. No, I told you I would if you did. But trying to Quit get down here. These are the living witnesses to what you're trying to do. Okay. You are trying to create a fictitious, fraudulent action. You are trying to bilk the Federal Reserve by securitizing an all-caps commercialized name Sir, and notifying them that the they Officer. that they are standing in debt now. If you touch me, you will violate natural law. Do not come near me. I am then protected shush, by the land. Shush. Yeah, tell me to shut up! 
I am the living natural man, and my voice will be heard. That is the Jolly Roger. That thing you call the American flag with the gold fringe around it is the Jolly Roger, and you are acting as one of its privateers. Okay. You're here on the charge of arrest. Receiving I'm here arrest. by a special visitation. Right. And I've here never let you get away with this. You bet officer. I'm here. To each charge, could be up to a $500 fine up to six months in jail. I do not understand any charges. I only understand universal law and the right to live. Well, to live in peace guilty. and to live as I need to. You pled not guilty in this in this. I court. never plead. Animals plead. Sound like bah, oink, oink. I have a paper with your signature on it, sir. It says prime evidence standing right through it. You bring forward all natural right. forms of evidence that I'm not prime evidence. I am the living soil. The dirt, the water, and the air has its own okay. voice, does it not? It all supports sir? forms of life, does it not? I am a part of that life. I am not your corporate fiction. Sir. Do not danger me. You're here today on an omnibus hearing. You've already pled not guilty. I am here by special visitation to see to it that you do not danger my natural living man's name. Are you prepared That's why to tell I'm the here. court if you wish to go to trial on this matter? This is a trial. Tell no, me this not. isn't a trial. Here's my this jury is an and my peers. Hearing, sir. You cannot produce a jury of my peers because all juries are selected from a pool of registered voters, and the instant a person registers to vote, their natural ability is a peer to comprehend. Natural law has been dissolved and turned into fiction. There cannot be raised a jury of my peers. It cannot be done. Excuse me for just a moment. No way. Get back here and finish this. Hey, hey, get back here and finish this. The judge has left the courtroom. There you go. You won. Yeah. There is nobody in this courtroom. Yeah. Yeah. The judge has yeah. walked out. The judge has walked out. Everybody I said no out. excuse. Everybody up and out. I'm not letting you go. Up and out. Up and out. Up and out. Up and out. All the man. <laughs> Thank you. This clip we're going to go to now, really kind of amazing. He's got to get, fine, I hope he's found it. It's on the common law. And this guy actually made the judge stand down, even when the bailiff came at him, he called in the British constables, who upheld their oath of office and got the case dismissed under common law. I've never seen this, where the guy actually wins. I know Clyde Bustrin tried this. I know uh, Roger Widener up in... Oregon tried this. A lot of people have tried, but this guy actually stuck it to the crooked judge who refused to produce or could not produce his oath of office. Can we go to that and I'll be back? A few minutes later, the police arrive. The constable listens as the lay advisor explains he has asked for the magistrate's oath and there has been no breach of the peace. The constable has been 
asked by the lay advisor to honour his oath, which he does. He is now upholding the law of the land and acting as a peace officer. The constable explains the situation to his men and asks them to stand down. However, the sergeant claims that the court belongs to the magistrates, which is untrue.
magistrate then asks all those seated in the public gallery to leave, which of course they do not, as it would give the magistrate jurisdiction. The lay advisor asks if we are in contempt. The magistrate then repeats that we should leave the court. This would enable jurisdiction and get us all thrown in the cells. The magistrate then throws in the old contempt of court chestnut, yet they still have no jurisdiction. The magistrates then throw in the towel and abandon the court for the last time. As the magistrates have abandoned the court for the third time and have never had jurisdiction, the lay advisor informs the court he is now the highest authority and leads the lay advisors out of the court. The only jurisdiction in the court was therefore common law, and the police constables honoured their oath. Case dismissed under common law. Okay, people. Wasn't that entertaining? I mean, yeah, they, t they spoke with a British accent, didn't they, Cassandra? They did. It did seem like there was a British accent in there. <laughs> and it was thick. And I wish it had been me or one of my cameramen who had the undercover camera got that all on video. Do you think for a minute that female prosecutor would ever have admitted to being stood down by one of her victims? No, she would never admit this, except it's on YouTube. I got this off of YouTube. Thank you, Brits, for sharing. Before YouTube, before this age we're in now, it would have been not possible. We would have never heard of this. The point in this thing is the common law trumps statutory law. It trumps everything. And one of the things common law has always provided is a judge must take an oath, and he must be able to show you that oath on demand. U.S. Constitution, Seventh Amendment says, under common law, it's in the first sentence and the last sentence of the Seventh Amendment, under common law, your right to a jury trial shall be preserved. They try to trick you and get you to family court, some other kangaroo court jurisdiction. And if you, if you obey the judge's orders, stand up, get down, and move out of the courtroom when they tell you, you've just given them jurisdiction. If you say anything without special appearance, you've given them jurisdiction. That's why I played that clip. And I thought Americans, no kid should graduate from college without seeing that clip and knowing your constitutional rights. No. All right, sit down, please, sir. Pardon? Just, just wait. I'm here to correct a mistake by the court. Well, first of all, if the court has made a mistake, are you Wilfred Keith Thompson? Uh, no, it's not what I want to go by, no. I see the information. <coughs> I have a petition application in terms of a uh, person that you speaking to, sir. I've tried to clarify this a few times, but apparently the level of the topic. So your here. name is Keith Thompson? My name is Keith. That's all. Nothing more, nothing less. You don't have a lot of speech, sir? I have a family name, clan name, but that's irrelevant today. So you are not Wilfred Keith Thompson? Okay, one more time on for the record, I am Keith. Nothing more. And sit down, sir. <coughs> I'm looking for a Wilfred Keith Thompson. Please sit down, sir. Actually, uh, Please sit down, sir. Sorry. Can't do that. I served uh, into the court this morning. Sir, I look for a Wilfred Keith Thompson. Bailiff, you are not that this, this is person. A, Sit down, sir. Bailiff, I Please remove you. this gentleman from the courtroom. Thank you. <coughs> That's the person you're looking for. Please, sir. Yes, sir, that is the person you're looking for. I'm trying to remedy things. Touch me, and you will be charged with. I'm a Keith Thompson. Do you want to dishonor a court official? The defendant's on the bell's desk. Sir, are you here on behalf of Mr. Thompson? I said I was the administrator for that account. 
Are you here as agent for him? Could you guys please back up? Thanks. Are you here as agent for him? Not as agent, as administrator, much like you are administrator of this uh, this court. So are you either him or you are here as his agent? As his speak on his behalf. Are you either of those? Yes, it's lawful. Pardon? Yeah, he's in common law jurisdiction, which I established as soon as I came in here this morning and reestablished again. The bailiff understood me. This other bailiff, wherever she went, she understood me as well. And this gentleman doesn't like talking. We're going to take a recess. Thank you. Thank you. All right. How long? How long, sir? I don't, I don't have all day. Thank you. I have things to do. <coughs> we'll take the court. Yeah, actually, uh, please note that the college. judge has abandoned the court. <coughs> it's abandoned ship, and I, as the sovereign in this room, clear, claim authority, case dismissed, with cause and prejudice. Have a nice day. See you later. Thank you. I'll start making my way down. Oh, that's great. Hold on, 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 and my water, please. Thanks, Oh, I need my verse for you. I need, oh, and you got the beast I don't, I need to test. Okay, that's the reason. Well, okay. Yes. Actually, I'm leave it there, leave it there, so put it back in the mail. Nice. Okay. Could have been that easy. What do you think? Well, it is anywhere. In a court. Argue with them. We're in lovely downtown Guelph, and I would encourage you, as a member of the Tourist Commission, to check out Beach Hawkins over there, fun imported sweets from Belgium, as well as Motor Gurk and Taylor, personal. Favorite of mine. Uh, you can get imported olive oils, depending on your apologies, as well as fresh baked breads and artisan cheeses of the whole. Thank you. That was always fun. How do we get into the South Sierra from this end? Big signs, no audio, no audio, and they said, Maverick, I think 